uh, questions and answers and also a discussion of online resources that people like. So I'm going to send out a, an email asking people to submit questions. So I know we've got something to talk about in that segment anyway. And also asking people what sort of online resource, resources do they use and do they recommend them? The other thing I want to mention is we're going to continue next week with our special interest group educational meetings. Uh, we had one uh, last month about the um, library module in Lightroom. We're going to continue on that path, talking about the development module in Lightroom. And that will be next Thursday. And again, I'll send out a link to that probably later tonight. So please join us there. The discussion, the educational one we're pitching towards beginning and intermediate photographers. So it's a good chance to painlessly learn something about Lightroom. So thank you. Thanks, Jay. Um, let's see who else is here. Amy, you want any meetups planned at this point or are we still on holding pattern? Not quite yet, but we will. Awesome. I knew we had something coming up. I just wasn't sure if it was finalized yet. Um, let's see who else is here from the board that needs anything. Any other board members need, have anything they want to talk about at the general meeting here before I, I go into the program? I am not seeing anybody responding. I see Jerry Stutzman is laying on the floor now, it looks like, looking up at his lamp. <laughs> hey, um, when it works, it works. <laughs> All right, so just a reminder for everybody, this meeting is being recorded. We'll be putting it up on our Zoom, or not our Zoom, we're on a Zoom meeting. We put it up on our YouTube channel for the members who aren't able to be here this evening. If you don't wanna be seen on camera because you're in witness protection, I strongly recommend you shut that camera off. Um, then we'll all know who you are that's in witness protection. Um, our, our, programming, our programming this, this month, is one I've been pretty excited about. Every time I see John Robert Williams talk, I learn something new. Um, one of the things that I, I think that we as photographers forget about is that when we carry that camera, we're able to document a little bit about what's going on around us and capture some of the things that are, are kind of historic that's happening that at the time we may not think is you know really crucial, but when you look back a year, you, you kind of remember, do I, re I was there one and here's my pictures of that. And um, John Robert Williams has been doing an amazing job capturing images from, uh, from the pandemic from the start through now. Um, I spoke of John prior to the meeting. One of the things he said, is he wants this to be an interactive presentation. Um, so if you have a question and you got your camera on, please raise your hand. I will get John's attention so you can ask the question. If you don't have a camera on, there's a way to raise your hand through Zoom. I don't know what that is. Um, but if you do that, I'll call on you um, once we get John's attention. Uh, any questions, concerns, or comments that you have, I hope you remain to photography related, not content related. We want to keep this uh, about the discussion on the photography, about composition, about different ways that, that we, we captured the events going on, not so much the events that are being, being discussed or being shown. Um, next month, we have... Uh, a gentleman I'm super excited about. I've been following him on fa on YouTube for a couple of years now. His name is Joe Edelman. He's a portrait photographer um, from, I believe, the East Coast. Uh, he's a very, very energetic individual. I hope that you'll join us for that. Uh, uh, April, we have Robert DeJoung. He's uh, from kind of a local guy. He's been carrying a camera around for about as long as uh, some of our members have who are not here today. Um, and he's got a book out about kind of capturing what's going on in the area as well. And then for any of the landscape photographers, May is going to be an amazing, amazing program. We got Nick Page coming all the way from the West Coast um, via um, the Zoom meeting. So we have a couple of really big presenters from our own, very own John Robert Williams all the way out to the West Coast in Oregon. John Robert Williams, the meeting is yours, sir. Hey, man, that's great. Now, I really, just to reiterate, what he was saying there just now is that uh, if you've got a question, really, I you can break into this thing at any time you want. Uh, I'm I'm all I'm an open book. That uh, and for those of you that don't know me, uh, I'm a local yokel. I was born here in Traverse City. I've lived here my entire life. I've not grown up here yet. Uh, fortunately, I've been pursuing my life as a commercial photographer now for 43 and a half years. I've been in business here in Traverse City, uh, so I make people product 
and place pictures. So I do advertising as my day job and my marketing. And then uh, I also carry a camera around to do my own personal things. And so I, for the most part, I just throw them up on Facebook and that's all I do is put them up on there. And if people want to buy them, that's great. I'm building a gallery space to sell prints and I've got another idea to sell um, Zoom backgrounds as well uh, to do that kind of like what Andy's doing behind himself there, but my won't, mine are a little different than that. But uh, so, but please, I, I've been doing nothing but commercial photography now for my whole life practically. So if you've got a question about something photo related, please fire away and ask because I'm an open book and I'll answer anything for you. Uh, and one of the things I'm going to stress here and what you're going to see is that I work very simply when I'm doing my personal stuff. I, you know, I have to, I have a truck to haul my stuff around when I'm going on a shoot. So I do the opposite of that when I'm doing my own personal things here. So um, I, I, my camera that I, you're going to see that did everything tonight is this little Leica monochrome. It's a full frame, 35 millimeter, you know, Leica camera with a 50 millimeter lens on it. I primarily use just the 50 millimeter lens. Whenever I'm making pictures, here's my rule. My camera is always set at the bottom ISO because that's where the sensor works. Everything else is gain and it's noise. And I don't wanna get into the discussion, but the camera was invented for the bottom ISO. Everything else is garbage in my book. So I work at the bottom. Every picture you're going to see was shot at the bottom ISO. And every picture I make commercially is at the bottom ISO. That's all I ever use. Then I dial in a lens aperture so that I, and mostly I work with my Leica lenses at F5.6. A couple of times you're going to see I break that rule in some pictures you see here with a different lens that I've got, which is an old antique lens, which is 66 years old that I use in some of these shots. And you'll see that they look different. Um, but I just use F5.6. I use the bottom ISO and I just chase the shutter speed. And that's how I work. It's simplify, simplify, simplify. And then with all my compositions, I work as simply as I can that way. Uh, I don't try to put the whole world in a picture. Uh, you know, just every picture tells a story. So if we're storytellers and we're making images with a camera, that's what we do. And so that's how I work. So if you've got any questions about that, feel free. But I, I, you know, you've got to fill the frame. I never crop an image in any of my personal work. Everything is what what I what I do. And again, when you're working with a rangefinder camera, it's kind of vague. So you really gotta you can't see the edges of the frame. So Everything I shot is with this camera that you're gonna see here. And uh, this is what I do. So here's the deal for the pandemic. If you can roll yourself back in your brain a little, about a year ago right now, things were starting to roll out and there were issues. And by the time early March rolled around, um, it was getting a little crazy. In my life, and what I made here is this personal diary. I decided to make it a visual diary after Andy contacted me about this. I thought, eh, I got to think about this. And I started looking at it and I thought, you know, this has to tell a story for this, for this presentation. And other people have been asking me about this, but you're going to see this. This is the world premiere of it. But I'm going to back up and tell you my life story here. So uh, I travel a lot um, for both for my work and for personal reasons. And so 2020 got to be a lockdown after the first part of the year. But um, I started out the year, I, my wife works in Africa, so I travel with her every year to the country of Malawi. So we're over there. So I do photographs there and I work for some institutions and I work for some um, not-for-profits and some foundations. And I also do work on her side for her medical work. Uh, so I do a lot of pictures while I'm there. I shoot generally 10 to 15,000 pictures in two to three weeks while I'm there. Uh, and doing that stuff. I got back here uh, very late January. And then by the 12th of February, I was off to Australia and I was working in Australia and doing stuff there. And I was there for two and a half weeks and came back on the last flight from Melbourne to LAX. And I was on the COVID flight with everybody coughing and hacking and doing the whole thing. Knock on wood, I haven't gotten sick. That's, you know, that's the good part about this whole thing. And just Tuesday, I got my second shot. So I'm... <laughs> I'm good. So you can't get me, get me sick on this Zoom call here. But so I, but I got back here and then things started locking up really quickly. 
And uh, I was coming back from, I, I'd realized at that point, I'd spent most of my year so far in the Southern hemisphere than the Northern hemisphere. And it's summer down there when it's winter up here, see, so. But when I got up here, I started making some photographs and, uh, and I would, I, my personal stuff is completely and oppositely different from my advertising and my commercial work because my commercial stuff, it's like a client hires you and you got to make something really pretty happen either if it's person, place, or thing, okay? So um, I do a lot of product work. I do portraits. I do all kinds of different things. But one of my personal stuff, I just, I take a camera, I get on my bicycle, and I go for a ride. And that's what you're going to see. Every image that was here, I was on a bicycle. I rode my bike to these places. And so that's why I travel light. One lens, one camera, that's it, okay? Fixed lens, no zooms. It's just a, most of these were shot with a 50 millimeter lens here. So you can see what we're gonna do. So I'm out for a bike ride in the late winter and we're gonna start this presentation here and I'm gonna call this the pandemic lockdown because we had no idea what was coming up to us. So uh, here we are in the middle of February and um, or late, very late February. This is my one gap between I went before I went to Australia and then came back. Uh, and so once I got back, things were locking down pretty quickly. And uh, so the governor was saying, hey, stay in your yard. You know, you can't leave the house. You can't do it. And so I'm like doing stuff like, okay, I'm going out with my camera and just trying to do stuff in the yard, you know? <laughs> so the melting snow and a leaf, some shadows, light and dark. I'm like, okay, well, you know, so who knew what was going to happen and, and we've gotten used to it a year later but you got to remember a year ago we didn't know what was going to happen here uh, and so innocently enough we just stayed in our yard and then you know right off the bat people started playing jokes with good old perry hannah over there and you know doing that but what you're going to see here is that all of my images from here on out i put a date in the lower left hand corner and so uh, I was doing some black and white stuff and, I, and I, I escaped in the car one day. This is my one time I wasn't on a bicycle. And I went out to the, near the Port Oneida area and the Sleeping Bear here, you know, the, along the Heritage Trail there. And was just trying to do some black and white pictures and just trying to do some lights and darks and shadows and the melting snow and just kind of recording stuff. And, you know, we were supposed to be staying at home at this point, but I just was like, yeah, I'm just going to sneak out. I'm all by myself. And so I'm just doing stuff, not really thinking about what I'm doing. But, you know, black and white photography is about highlight, shadow, tone, detail, uh, texture, all those things. And so I'm just doing my thing. OK, and just like processing pictures. And so making good old black and white pictures. And it's like, okay, you know, uh, come home, process them, do things like that. One of the things that black and white, if you're working in monochrome a lot, is that it, your highlights always come forward and the shadows recede. And the, your eye always goes to the brightest thing in the picture. So you play with the highlights and you let the shadows. And so when this is like evening light at this point, and you know, I'm just doing stuff like this. And again, all this is just shot with a 50 millimeter lens. And then the next couple of days later, I'm riding around town and on my bike and it's like, there's nobody on the streets. And I'm thinking this is probably the way we need to market the, or just start recording things. And remember, this is, I'm you know, just thinking about this. And then I get this news story that Brick Wheels gets broken into. So this is the front of Brick Wheels. My friend, Tim Brick, I've known since elementary school and, uh, it's like, how could somebody, you know, you hear the stores are all closed down, nobody can do anything, and someone breaks the window and steals an expensive bicycle out of it, and that he throws it in the Boardman Lake, and they find it in the Boardman Lake, and, but I just thought the total insult of someone breaking in the front window was just, I, I don't know, it just, it just ground me. So I started riding my bike around town, and I thought, well, the easiest way to start describing the vacantness of, of, and of this whole lockdown is just every place you'd see normal cars and people and life and commerce suddenly is, you know, it's crickets everywhere. So uh, riding around town, here's 8th Street. And I'm just going to have a lot of streets in this thing you're going to see because it Traverse City became, went from this vibrant hub of Northwest Michigan to you know, Cricketville in no time. So, uh, here we are, 8th Street looking west, and nothing. 
8th Street looking west, closer to downtown. No traffic on the streets there. Uh, you know, and just working with the compositions, nobody on the sidewalk, nobody on the street, just Sorry, quiet. Tell you traffic so, on Apple Watch. so then uh, you, know, you go downtown, this is the farm market area. Normally people would be parked down there, uh, you know, just for commerce and business shopping downtown. Everything's empty everywhere. And um, so on Front Street downtown, uh, virtually nothing. All the businesses are locked up. Nothing's open. Of course, the theaters are closed. The restaurants are closed. No stores, no commerce, no nothing. Uh, and just a little aside here, this bike over on the right, that's my bike. And that's the bike that I pedaled around on all these shots you're going to see here. So um, I just rode around town. It was the one thing you could do. They said you could go out and walk your dog and you could go out and ride a bike or run. But other than that, it's a lockdown, remember? So uh, here you are on East Front Street, the McDonald's, right? Right over here, normally packed with cars, normally cars on Front Street, nothing. I was like, wow, go overboard by Munson Hospital. Normally this visitor lot is packed and here there were just a few cars there. And I don't even think these were visitors because they were letting no visitors in at that point. They already had set up the COVID tents underneath the parking deck at that point. And, uh, you know, it was like they were getting ready for who knows what, but at least the tents were ready. And I'm just thinking, you know, I better get this. So, you know, got that stuff because who knows what's going to happen here. Another thing that I did in recording stuff when you're telling stories is uh, put dates on it and times. And one of the things that I did, and I didn't include them in here, but I kept recording the gas prices going down and down and down and down and down as, as the demand dropped, the gas prices dropped and it went down to under a dollar at the mutual station. <laughs> so um, that kind of stuff. But you go to the NMC parking lot, normally you'd have students there and, and the classes would be in session. There's nothing there. So just the vacantness of, of this. And the other thing you're going to see a lot is, is that um, I really, everybody kind of slid into a bit of a depression, whether you like to admit it or not. And these pictures are purposely a little bit dour and, and depressing. Uh, that's one of the reasons I also like to work in black and white. It can be very exciting because you're working with tonality, but when you got gray skies and flat and everything, man, the world really gets a little bit sleepy in a hurry here. So uh, you've got to, you just have to think of that. But another NMC parking lot, again, normally be full of students cars parked there and instructors you go to the senior high school nothing there it's just vacant i mean there's it's crickets everywhere you go and it's like and so you go into the neighborhoods here's washington street looking east and hey john yes what, what kind of time frame were these pictures at were these middle of the day when the normal you know, visitor that's a great the question you, you can see by the light this is middle of the day uh, and, and the dates are down in the lower left-hand corner, so you can see exactly when I'm doing it. That was how I kind of made this my visual diary, so that the dates are all there. I didn't want to make it an overrun. But you'll see, there's going to be some stuff that's not, but this is obviously middle of the day. You know, you can, you a, it wasn't a Sunday afternoon down at the college. That was when class. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, no, no. Uh, so a great question. I'm glad you asked. So this is West Front Street, same day. I just, you know, had plenty of time to pedal around town. Uh, so this is looking toward downtown, looking east from Elmwood Street, uh, virtually nothing running. Going further east toward downtown, you know, you just see a car or two, no one on the sidewalks. Normally you'd see businesses hopping and everything going every which way here. Now, here's obviously an, an evening shot, Andy, uh, but still, uh, there was, you go downtown in the evening, it's full. You know, you get, you get, there's nightlife, there's people going every which way and wherever I went. Now, here, what I'm trying to do, uh, and, and one of the, the values is of, I was riding back and forth and I'd come home and edit some stuff, process, look and see it and go, like, yeah, I kind of liked this twilight hour where the lights come on and yet you still have detail from the sky and the light ambient light so i'm kind of mixing things up here a little bit because again black and white you're only working with highlights and shadows and blacks and whites and tones so i think it's a nice time of day to make pictures 
Uh, the other thing you see is just by the vacantness of everything here is you you see a lot more. You don't see cars in the way. You don't see all this other stuff. And I could walk right out in the lanes and do things anytime I wanted uh, during these pictures. But still, every business is closed. And so you're used to seeing downtown full of stuff. And you'd see a car once in a while just creeping by. People just looking like, yeah, wow, these stores are all closed. <laughs> it, was, it was really kind of shocking. I waited for these people to walk into this picture just to prove that, you know, people, humanity was still going. Uh, but one of the things that, um, and I don't know if you know this, but I have something to do with the state theater. Um, and by having that marquee and that, that whole sign on down there was one of the moths that was the, was the flame that drew the moths downtown. And you, we just couldn't imagine downtown with that, without that flickering lights down there. And here now the marquee shut off on the state theater. And that to me was, that was a shock um, to see that going dark and just having the LEDs on up above. It was like, oh boy, this is, um, this is not the way we wanted it. And at this point, the, you know, the governor had shut down all the theaters, shut, closed the churches, closed everything. We couldn't gather. So no sense running 20,000 watts worth of lights here when there's nobody downtown. So off went the lights. Restaurants are all closed. Wherever you'd look, up and down sidewalks, up and down streets. This is front and Park Street. This is looking south on Park toward the Park Place. You can see in the top middle of the frame there. Normally, this is one of the busiest intersections in downtown. There's always people at every corner standing on the sidewalks. There's always cars every which way. And there was nothing. And it was silent. It was just absolute silence. Work your way over to Union Street. This is looking south on the sidewalk on Union. I mean, wherever you'd go. And we've sort of gotten used to this, but back then in late March, this was like, holy cow, what has happened here? I actually waited on looking south on Union Street for that person to walk into the middle of the street just to show that there was some humanity left. Um, but uh, there was no, I could, as you can see, I'm in the middle of the street doing a photograph and it's not dark yet, and dark comes pretty early still. And the other thing that started happening is, is I, I, I really was getting a little bit sour and a little depressed, and so I started making these, started getting downtown, and like, you know, with all the all these cars here, you can see a lot more than you'd normally see because you normally know, this parking lot would be full. And I thought, you know, this is pretty scuzzy right here in the heart of downtown Traverse City. And I thought, I'm just gonna record this. So. That's what I started doing. I mean, so we talk about beautiful Traverse City. Well, here you are, the center of downtown, and it doesn't look so wonderful. And that new parking deck that was getting built up next to the apartment complex there, I thought this was kind of hideously ugly. Um, and here there were weeds growing up in front of it, the snake grass and stuff. And I just thought like, yeah, that's going to... So I, I really was getting pretty sour at this point. And this is the April 1st here. And you're going to see that it's just, you know, I'm kind of spiraling a little bit. So this is, I'm jumping back with me, April 1st and March. But, um, so, but here's the parkway. Downtown, obviously middle of the day and not a car to be seen. I waited for those two people to get down to that point uh, just to show that, again, there was some humanity left and that this isn't some, you know, trick like long exposure or anything. Um, you know, I'm just making it, but here you are, the parkway, which is full of cars normally. Busy, it's busy, almost, busy. It's Nothing. almost post-apocalyptic. Post exactly. Looking at it. I mean, it's just like a bomb went off and everyone went into hiding. Right. And I forgot how how desolate or empty or, or barren and, and you, I'm pointing with my mouse and you can't see it. Um, the the piece of garbage about middle of the screen hanging over the guardrail of the road there yeah exactly it right was, so much was just undone and unkept and i forgot and scrolling through this i'm remembering oh yeah it was a scary scary time in our in our our society and we had the ability to capture it and many of us i stayed home because i was Scared. Well, we were supposed to, and you weren't supposed to be out in your car. So again, it was okay to go for a bike ride. It was okay to go for a run. So that's what I did. But thanks for pointing that out. Um, people started doing some imaginary things, you know, to allow people to gather. And so this is in front of the workshop down, brewery downtown. Uh, you know, they 
put a little dome up. That was novel then. Now you see them around town a bit more. But when I first saw this one, I was like, wow, you know, this is April 1 here, okay? I'm also recording the fact that the crane is still back there. They're still under construction on this building. So I'm trying to tell multiple stories here at the same time. And you also see that most of the time it's really gray skies and it's really cloudy and it's really kind of a dismal time of the year. So it was really, you know, compounding itself. Now this is where I go back and I hop around to this other, other lens. This is an 85 millimeter lens. It's an F1.5 lens. When it was built, it was the fastest lens in the world back then that you could buy. Uh, so purposely shallow depth of focus here. That's what I'm doing. Um, uh, because I'm trying to throw your eye down there and to also make it look a little woozy, like, wow, you know, so that, you know, the pandemic is really grabbing a hold at this point. So I would do different shots around town with, with this lens as well. So this is an 85 instead of a 50. Um, but I'd only go one lens at a time. That was it. I don't carry a bunch of stuff. Um, I just, I slant, slow the camera over my shoulder and pedal around town. Uh, so back downtown again, still no foot traffic. And this just kept going like, wow, this is a repeating theme over and over. Another thing that was showing up is when no cars are on the road is you can start seeing the infrastructure falling apart because there's no cars covering it up. And so the streets, you can really see how in bad shape they are. All sorts of things, all the warts all started coming out during this. So that was something else that I was recording that I was, I was you know, cognizant of when I was doing it. Um, and so that's, I'm just pointing that out in, in a picture like this. Um, here we are looking at Front Street, looking west toward downtown. So we're in the 800 block or so. Normally this is packed full of cars. You can't see or cross this street. Here we are and in the late afternoon and not a car to be seen. Uh, this is looking south on Boardman Street toward the courthouse. You're looking down to where the construction is down there. That building at the end of the street there, that's gone at this point. There's new construction going up. Uh, but again, normally Boardman is always parked up. There's cars every which way. And I'm standing in the middle of Front Street taking, making that picture. Uh, going down to Cass Street looking south from downtown. This is, I'm, I'm standing in the lane at Front Street looking south down the street not a car to be seen on Cass Street. I defy you just to find a time when there's not a car on these downtown streets. This is 8th Street from Fern looking east. Um, there's just nothing there, not a, not a car moving. Turn around, stand in the middle of the street, look west down 8th Street. So that's you know, the Family Fair Prevo's area there. Front Street, I'm standing out in the street here from like Rose Street looking east. Normally busy, 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 and turning around looking the other way. I waited for a truck just to prove that this wasn't some long exposure thing that, you know, as a trick, you know, I'm not doing it. There's no tricks here. <laughs> um, looking north from Park Street toward the parkway. And so you'd normally have cars on the parkway. You'd normally have cars on Park Street and Front Street. And there's no people, nothing around anywhere. Um, I'd go back downtown in the evenings just to see what it would look like. I'd stay in the house all day and I just think, you know, I got, I got to get out of here. So um, I, I would, I would do that. I would just um, go downtown and just see if anything's happening. Nope. Here we are. 6th of April. The other thing that I was doing was that we were supposed to stay at the house. So I was just fiddling around with stuff inside the house, making some black and white pictures and color pictures, but I'm only doing monochromes here. So, you know, this is just stuff in my kitchen um, or the stools in the kitchen, you know, just playing with light and shadow and just fiddling around with this. Again, this is with that old 1.5 lens. So you purposely get really shallow depth of focus and it kind of makes it, you know, a little less, you know, straight. Other things that we started happening and seeing downtown were that this is in front of the Good Harbor Coffee Place. They had gloves outside before you could walk in the door. And it was like, maybe that's something we're used to now. But on the 6th of April, that was pretty novel. <laughs> like, oh my God, you can't go into the coffee shop without putting on gloves. So, you know, or you even open the door. So they had it like, so you couldn't open the door. So as you see, please use gloves, open the door. So uh, this, this was completely and utterly foreign to us at that point during the pandemic. 
Here we are on Hastings Street looking north. So this is not far from my studio. And I'm, I don't know why I, the day I was out doing this, but I was like, this is a very busy street most of the day, all, all day long and all evening long. There's just traffic, traffic, traffic. And so this is looking toward Garfield Street, the big shopping centers and the parking lots there. I got back and just kind of like, look, there's nothing happening. I mean, just it's ghost town, ghost town over and over and over. But that's what this pandemic and this lockdown was doing. And these are the story that I'm trying to tell. So everywhere I'd go, this is what it was like. It was one bit of it after another. You could actually see some headlights way off in the distance there. But this is Front Street looking east from Park Street. And normally you can't stand in the middle of Front Street to do a photograph. You could go fishing. They did allow you to do that. And so here we got some socially distanced fishermen. Uh, so I shot that from the boardman for the Murchie Bridge from the mouth of the Boardman River. Uh, again, with that wide, that fast lens. And so I'm trying to do the kind of woozy stuff here just a little bit. Uh, back downtown to the sidewalks, throwing a vertical in here instead of some, you know, some horizontals. But Again, back down to Park Street, looking toward the park place. Do you normally see people and traffic and everything else? The parkway again here. So I'm like at the, the marina entrance looking east. It's always full of cars. That car that was parked there was parked there for weeks. <laughs> it was like abandoned. And the parkway looking west. And again, you know, the dreary skies, just everything about it. I, you know, it was like, wow, this is, it's getting rough down here, you know. Uh, this to me spoke a lot. Uh, was, this is at the marina downtown. Uh, this woman obviously just needed to get out by herself and just sit and catch some quiet outdoor from being cooped up. And I just thought, yeah, you know, that's this is everybody right there wanting to be right there. You know, John, that last picture that was about that period in the in the pandemic. I think a lot of us hit that really dark area in our life and we're looking for something that we could do. And I think you captured that great and showed the, the, the monochrome showed a great, great oh, thank you. feeling of, of it. And the woman sitting alone, knowing what was going on at that time really tells that story. And I, I think it, it shows that we as, as photographers have this ability to, to document what's going on and to capture things that aren't always the pretty pictures of beautiful landscapes. The Steve Engels, uh, pretty flowers if it's flashlight. We've got a lot of other um, abilities to do with our cameras. And, and I think you're, you're highlighting that great. Well, thank and, you. Thank yeah. you for hearing. Well, and I appreciate that. And there's, you know, again, every picture tells a story and I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I was just, again, this was my outlet, my relief. And, and I'm always looking for the highlights and the shadows and the reflections and everything else, because when you're working with monochrome, you gotta, you gotta do that or it's just too flat. Uh, and so, uh, but that's what I'm doing and, and trying to capture that. And you're right, it was a sense of despair for a lot of people. And, and so um, like, here we are down at, at the Clinch Park thing. I waited for this guy, obviously, to come going through because it felt like to me, every picture had no people in it. It was getting to the point where it's like, this is just ghost town city. And I want to at least prove that someone's alive, you know, because it was getting to be, I always put people in pictures because you got to have scale. You need that life. Your eye automatically goes to another human. You react to that human. You react to that scene differently. And it changes the scale of it. If you take your finger and cover up a person in a picture, the whole scale changes, the whole interest changes. So our, our brains are wired to look at people. And so I waited specifically for this, you know, to, to have something because it was just getting to be like, oh my God, there's nobody anywhere. And people had so much time on their hands. They're going down the beach, picking up beach detritus and making little you know, sculptures, little teepees or, or whatever, um, ashrams or something. I don't know, but uh, it, it, you know, this is stuff you normally don't see on a public beach, okay? <laughs> they had the time to go do that. And so I just, even though the people weren't there, I felt I had to catch it. Um, and when the weather's dreary, uh, you know, people could go out socially distance and fish. But for a while, you got to remember, there was no fishing allowed. You couldn't even have people fishing. The, the DNR was waiting at the 
boat launches to stop people from fishing. But this guy was out fishing in the bay one day in the fog. And I just thought, yeah, that, that, there you go. That's about as lonely as it gets right there. And with the dreary weather, uh, the nice thing about it for me is that when it's wet, you get these extra reflections and it changes the concrete, it changes the asphalt, it changes everything. And you get these complex tones that you normally don't get with dry surfaces. And so when it's raining, I actually go out and shoot. Uh, plus it just adds to the dismalness of the whole thing. Uh, and I did wait for that woman to, with her walking her dog, to get into that spot, to get that just again, because I felt like I was doing nothing but ghost towns and it was getting a little crazy and it was driving me crazy. So here you are, we're at the north end of Division Street looking straight south down Division. Uh, so that's the front street traffic light down there. And here, not one car on what I think is one of the busiest sections of highway in Northern Michigan. I mean, that street has always got cars on it. This is Hall Street looking south from the parkway across the parkway, looking south. Normally there's cars every which way, the beta's in and out of there, everything else. Go around to Union Street, obviously all the bars and the taverns, all the businesses are still closed. So, uh, but I just thought, you know, we got to capture this stuff. And it's, it's April getting around. 10th. Pardon? It's it April 10th and they had St. Patrick's Day stuff up yet. Correct. It was, it was shut down just before St. Patrick's Day and Correct. no one went and cleaned any of that up. Right. So here I've got some Easter eggs here, which don't show up as well in monochrome as they would have been, you know, a color picture. Uh, but I'm trying to show the Easter eggs. Somebody was trying to do something because we're getting close to Easter here. And I was also trying to put in the, the state theater marquee kept changing all the time and they were kind of playing off from old movie titles to do something and so here was Mr. Smith goes to wash his hands you know so they were always doing something clever and turning a fun pun there uh, into doing that and so I normally don't like to play word games and pictures because I think that's wrong but here it's making a statement and it's about a time and so that's why I was recording those things um, go around the corner and go to State Street. So this is from Pine Street looking all the way down State Street East. And, you know, it's just, again, it's just the, the postal service wasn't running, nothing was going. You go over near the hospital area and the whole hospital zone. This is Elmwood Street looking north. You would normally see that street all parked up. This is looking down east down 11th Street. Normally you see traffic everywhere here, cars parked all along there. This is uh, Silver Drive in the Commons area, looking south toward Meyer. Obviously, no traffic there. 14th Street. So um, we're looking east on 14th here. You can see the J Loop, so you can kind of get an orientation of where you are if you know Traverse City. 14th Street is always packed with cars. Both directions, looking 14th Street now west. Um, nothing moving in sight go to silver lake road and shoot back uh, this is frankie road looking back toward town nothing's moving there hey john uh yeah. jim's got a question go ahead and unmute Fire away yes jim jim you're muted oh, okay there um you said you were using iso of what i'm assuming 100 you said the lowest uh, yeah, the, 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 the Leica monochrome bottom ISO is 320. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was wondering, your, your images seem very uh, sharp, and if you were using a tripod, but I, it sounds more like you were just hand-holding your, your shots. Um, the evening shots, there is uh, either a tripod, monopod, or I brace them on, on a, I, a place that I find. That's a great question. Sometimes I was putting the camera on a, a railing or some downtown fixture. Uh, I'll balance a camera that way and squeeze very slowly to get the exposure. Other times I'll take a tripod, but it isn't very handy to take a tripod on a bicycle. No, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, so it, it doesn't work out that well. Um, but but the, the drawback is, though, and I'll, I'll show you, is that even though I, well, I don't have it on this lens. Normally, I have a, if when I'm shooting on the monochrome, I just swatch this over. I, I use an orange filter to gain more contrast in the skies and, and to, just to build contrast. So I would normally have a, a, an orange filter over my lens, which knocks the ISO down or the effective speed from 320 down to 
uh, about 160. So uh, you lose about a stop with that. So uh, you're shooting in, in monochrome. You're not converting it after you shoot it. No, this oh. is a Leica monochrome camera. It has oh, no color oh, okay. sensor. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Oh, no, that's said. okay. No, I wanted to make that clear. No, this is no conversion. This is a this is a monochrome camera. Okay. Okay. There's there's no. It can't make color. It, it, and so the thing, and this is a, a CCD monochrome chip, and um, so you get this long tonal scale range with it and do all sorts of things. Plus the lenses, uh, you know, they're just, they're just crisper than uh, your, your standard yeah, run of the mill glass too. And they're not zoom lenses. Okay. So I can run it at a, at a, at a different aperture, but I'm certain that I made this picture at F5.6. I can tell you that because that's what this lens stays at. Okay. okay. So F, F5.6 ISO 1, 320, because that's the bottom ISO. And then I just play with my time. It's that simple. That's all you have to know to make a picture. Lock, eliminate your variables. I like to say, keep your ISO the same, keep your, you know, your aperture the same, and just change your shutter speed. And that's all you need to know. And John, if I can interrupt for one more second. Sure. You keep saying something. I don't know if everyone's catching. You don't say I take a picture. You make a picture. Correct. Right. Yeah. You don't take a painting. You make a painting. Okay. So if you're trying to illustrate something. Uh, you make it, you don't take it. Uh, snapshots are taken pictures. I'm doing something intentionally. And so I'm, I'm, I'm lining everything up. I'm carefully framing it. I'm doing all the things that it takes. I'm uh, all the wheels are turning upstairs here because I'm, you know, I'm shooting every, all this is all shot at manual. There's no auto anything here. There's no auto focus with these cameras. This is a manual focus lens. That's, a, that's the only way this works. Okay. There's no auto anything on this. All right. It's simple. The, 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 this is why I have to, I, I got to tell you, this is why I like Leica cameras because it's just the bare essentials. There's no nothing in them. It's, it's like working with film. It's, there's, there's no tricks. There's nothing in it. There's no features. It's just, it's just shutter speed. You change the aperture on the lens itself. And if I leave the sensitivity alone, what else am I doing? I'm focusing the camera and composing. That's all you got to do. You know, when I, I, you've, I've heard you say that numerous times uh, that you make a picture and it clicked one day. And the day that that clicked, what you were saying and the message you were sending there changed how I, how I capture images, what the process I go through. Um, it's, it's sometimes the simplest little thing, like I make a picture versus I take the picture that changes how some of us look at, at what, at the art that we're doing. So well, I, I, it, that's important. thank you. And on my website, when you go to it, it just starts out with, I write with light. Okay. And so if you write, you're using your hand. Okay. And it's, it's, it's intentional. You don't just with your hand, you physically write, okay? Or if you're painting, we're not just spilling paint on a canvas here, we're composing something. Most painters will sketch in their composition intentionally and then fill it in with paint, but they get the shapes and the forms and the content from their outer frame. And I never crop anything. I shoot, everything you see here is full frame. I never crop a file. So yeah. nothing, you, nothing you see here is cropped. So everything is shot full frame. Uh, and now you're working a shot like this. Uh huh. Are you typically taking one frame? All right. Um, as, that's a good question. Stand there and look at the scene, and it's, all this stuff is rolling through your head. Are you taking multiple shots to see what works best, or is it pretty well? I I do. Uh, that's a great question. I, 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 will, I will get myself pretty much where I think I need to be. And then I will squeeze off a frame and I look at the back of the, of the camera uh, and go like, ooh, you know, I want to point down a little lower. Uh, or, ooh, maybe I want to change that exposure just a little bit. Uh, but after the second frame or the third frame, I'm done. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not carrying multiple lenses with me. Uh, so, uh, and it's not zoom. This is a 50 millimeter lens. Okay. I, I own a 35, I own a 75, you know, but I just would take one lens at a time. You know, it's just like, I just throw this over my shoulder. 
that's all I'm doing. Okay. So it's, I get on my bike and I ride around town. So simplify, simplify, simplify. That's why I, you know, and so I say stick with one ISO, stick with one aperture and everything falls into place so much easier. You, you make life so hard when you put auto this auto that and in you, then you're chasing it forever. And it's like, no, do it right here. And it's so much simpler to do it that way. And then um, get rid of the, the zoom lenses. You know, that's the other part. You, you don't need zoom lenses. You just don't. I mean, everything I'm shot here. I mean, do you see that I need something else? You know, I don't know. I think uh, I ask a question. Fire away. Um, it, in the days of shooting black and white film, we always exposed for shadow detail and let the, the highlights fall where they would. And with digital, it's the opposite. Why is that? Uh, well, that's a good question. The Leica camera, the monochromes, uh, you have to slightly underexpose because when you hit, um, but you, this is where you use your histogram on the back of your camera. If you see that anything is spiked over and you get the little red warning that the, your, you've blown out your highlights, you can't recover that. The shadows are recoverable in, in a black and white file, and especially on these files. But I don't do either. I, I make certain when I look at my exposure and you know, I do that first shot, I will make certain that nothing is pinned on the right side of the histogram. Okay, I want it bumping right up to it, but nothing pinned or a spike going up. Then I know I'm fine. That's all I need to know. Okay, that makes sense. That, that's the, yeah. Because once you've that. blown out a highlight, you can't recover it. If you want detail in your highlights. OK, and okay. so and in black and white, in a digital world here, uh, we go from zero to 255. 255 is white, white, white. Zero is black, black, black. OK, so if you hit 255, there's no detail in white. So you got to keep it under 255. So if, you, okay. if you're in Photoshop or anything and you probe around, just go to info and you just probe around your screen a little bit. Um, go to your highlights and if you'll see those numbers. It'll just show you. And if you're under 255, you got detail. It's okay, that, thank you. Yeah, it's that easy. Uh, and if you are converting, your, I realize nobody has a black and white camera. So if you are converting your files in Photoshop, uh, my suggestion is, is you just uh, open up your file. And the first thing you do on the, in your Adobe camera raw is you click on the monochrome button right up on top and it'll get rid of all that crazy stuff. But then immediately go out, go down to the mixer because that'll be all your different channels and start sliding back and forth and watching where your details are and keep your eye on that histogram there. But it's that simple. Just click on monochrome in your Adobe Camera Raw. Um, and it's the same interface that's in the Lightroom for, for that. But click on monochrome first and then just get into your sliders immediately and start looking at how the effects change. That's how this speeds it up because I don't have to do that. There are no color channels here. I don't have any. <laughs> I have none. Okay. So the, yeah, no, yeah, oh, it's great. No, please. Any question you can't, I, I'm an open book. So anything you want to know, I'm, I'm here for you. So that's it. Um, and so interrupt all you want. This is over at sixth street, you know, at Munson hospital. And, you know, as you know, at the hospital, it's always a snarl of traffic and there's none. West Front Street, you know, I, I, again, I waited, you can barely see there's somebody on that sidewalk way down there, but it's like, you know, ugh, you know, there's no traffic further out on West Front Street, still nothing. And this is right over where the, all the hospital traffic is. This is looking south on Cass. Here we are on the 10th of April. This was a really dismal day, but Meyer, bam, <laughs> the parking lot was full. Same day. Here we are, 10th of April. That's the nice thing about EXIF data versus film. Film, it does never tells you what date it was. The EXIF data tells you down to the second when you took your picture, you know, so. Hey, John. Yes. Uh, since you say you can't recover your shadows. Oh, are highlights. You shooting, uh, highlights. Your highlights. Are you shooting in JPEG or RAW? No, um, this camera only records in DNG. DNG, very good. Thank uh -huh. you. No, you bet. No, thanks for asking. That's a good, I did not make that clear. Uh, for this presentation, I obviously had to turn around and save everything as a JPEG to make it 
going here, but, um, but no, it's, uh, they're, they're, they're fairly faithful. So, um, it, and it's just fun. I've got, I've got both a color body and a, and the black and white body. And there is just no way with the color body, I can make those files look like these files. There's just no way I've tried and tried and tried. You just, you don't get the complex half tones and middle tones and, and, and things. Um, and this has a really wide tonal range available to it. So this is front and union street looking West, um, 10th of April. <laughs> it's like, where is everybody? Now we're getting to Easter. This is Easter Sunday. Normally at the church is downtown Easter Sunday. Hello. We've got people every which way. Nope, we've got the doors closed and they've got notices up and signs and you can't come in. There's no service. Go over behind the courthouse area. Um, there's two churches over there plus a synagogue. And so, you know, there's nobody there. Turn around at the Baptist church. Nobody there on Easter Sunday. I mean, this was like, wow. Downtown on State Street, again, looking west. And you can see you can see the mist in the air and the the kind of dreary weather and the wet pavement, you know the patchiness and here and there. And to me, that patchiness um, it just adds to the black and white experience, the monochrome experience of it. And one of the rare times that I turn around, I'm I'm not a guy that likes to shoot into the light. I just I don't like backlit stuff that much. I don't know why. It just I. But on this one, it was like when I was going down the street, it's like this road looked like silver. And it was like, it was so wet. It was like, oh my God. And so the only way it gets looking like silver is when the light is coming at you, glints off from the computer screen or off the, off the road. And then you just see it like that. So it's like, wow. So I just stopped there. And then it turned out that like this one standing in the middle of front street, looking west toward downtown was like the defining image of this whole thing it's like we really are in a lockdown now okay we <laughs> this is like this is this is looking serious here and the other thing about it too is that you can play these highlights off from the wet the wet and so this is why don't be afraid to go out when it's wet because if you're looking at the tonality of it and the geometric compositions I kind of liked this picture because I had highlight, I had shadows, I had patterns, you know, I had all kinds of stuff, geometric stuff all happening in one shot. And I can show the deteriorating roads. So, you know, which is from road salt, but we won't go there. Um, but again, you can see the road falling apart here. This is Boardman looking toward the bay. Um, you can tell it's the time of day that the lights have just come on uh, downtown. But again, normally this is, you know, traffic, people, everything, the post office, you know, which there's always cars parked there because people are going in and out checking their PO box. Nope, nobody there. The parking decks were all closed. No one's in the parking decks. And on this one, I didn't have a tripod. This is definitely dark. And there are bars on the windows and I stuck the camera through the bars and rested it on the concrete and held my breath and went, because I think this was a two or four second exposure kind of handheld, but sitting on the concrete, you know, but I was having to hang onto it because if I let go of it, it would have just fallen through the bars and down on the, the inside. So, um, and I couldn't have retrieved the camera. <laughs> um, this is the building just before it fell down, you know, back there at, on Front Street at Boardman. So caught that just kind of, again, the patterns, the, the zebra stripes, the lights, the darks, the lights in the sky, you know, if you're working in monochrome, that this is the kind of stuff you want to look for to kind of, you know, have those highlights. Again, the same thing. You get some wet spots and it turns into silver. You don't blow out the highlights and so they turn into silver. And so, you know, that's is it's you can get this, you do this dance, but if you just again look at your histogram on your camera and don't let anything hit that right hand edge, there's your exposure. That's all you need to know. Don't pin it on the right. You expose to the right, but don't pin it, okay? That's all you got to know. It's that simple. The parking deck itself was closed. You know, it was locked up. I mean, you, you couldn't get in there. And again, it's just playing with the highlight and shadows and the tones and the time and everything like that, um, making these exposures. 
Um, the parking lots, again, with the with the wetness and just being vacant, we're showing that. We're showing that the, the stores downtown are empty. This is the Maxa service parking lot. And what caught my eye was this kind of jig jag on the asphalt. And I was like, oh, I'm just in one of those moods. <laughs> so I got that. I played with these zebra stripes in the foreground here and shooting down Park Street again with the, with the wet and just um, trying to get the fact that there's nobody circulating. But I, I did wait until some people walked into that shot. I stood there for 20 minutes to get somebody in that picture just so that I wasn't like shooting doomsday. I, you know, Park Street downtown, again, normally where you always see people, it's just there's nobody there and i know this is getting to be an old story but life was getting to be an old story there day after day you know here we are in lockdown uh, and this just goes to show you you know people say oh i don't like a 50 millimeter lens well you know a 50 millimeter lens can do a lot and you know it's 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 not bad it's a it's a pretty flexible lens to work with and you can get you know architectural shots and you can get depth and you can get all the stuff and uh, so it you can do a lot of things with um, pretty basic equipment. This is the Parkway. Uh, That's the Holiday Inn, the old you know old Holiday Inn, West Bay Beach. Uh, the ominous clouds, the the fact that the you know the streetlights had just come on, and this is obviously the busiest intersection around, and nothing. So you know that was pretty telling to me. They turned the lights on and I had to come down just to record the fact that the lights had gone back on and I wanted to also the new play on the on the left hand screen there of their their new movies you know that they were always joking about. So I came down to get that. Um, State Street again just on, you know here we are the 13th of April. You know gloomy skies again it's looking pretty sad. More parking lots uh, just you know, the patterns and the highs and lows, but the fact that there's no cars in these lots was the story I was trying to tell. Normally the little fleets full of people by this time, it's all closed up. So there's nothing there. I purposely put the bags over. I like the bags over the parking meters because it was like, we were all closed up everywhere. You know, it was like nothing. Uh, even the, even the alleys, you know, they just, everything seemed abandoned, you know? And so, uh, Again, playing off highlight and shadow, just looking at the light, work, always looking at the light. And that's how you make your pictures is you write with light and you gotta look at the light and the time of day and how you approach it. Because you know nature gives you the light. It's, you, it's your timing and your interaction with it is how you make it go. Um, this is the alley, this is Union Street. You're looking across on the alley between Front and State. Normally all filled full of cars, there's nobody there. Then I rode out to, I pedaled out to Acme one day on the bike path. And you know, here we are with Burger King empty, the Bayview restaurant closed. And I just thought that yeah, that dead stick right there was like, yep, yep, that, that fits. You know, that's, that's, that's just the way it's going. Um, the Grand Traverse Resort, I got out there and uh, there were also some amazing, these were snow clouds that were forming. Uh, there were there were lake effect squalls that were kind of popping up and doing some stuff. It was a wild day, but because I use this orange filter over the camera, see, I get that sky that contrasts automatically. So it, it, it's built in. So uh, when you're working that way, but here's one of the times I wished I'd had a wider lens. I was backing up as far as I could into the trees, but here's the Grand Traverse Resort parking lot and nothing's moving there. So I go out to the roundabouts on M72 by Meyer, uh, and there's <laughs> nothing going on there. And go to the second roundabout on M72 looking east toward the casino, and there's no cars there, and you know there's always traffic there. Uh, here you can see more of those, those stormy, squally clouds. Uh, and I just, I just thought, well, the Murdoch fudge and the highway and you know, just the way the whole parking lot and everything's empty. There's no cars anywhere. It's like, yeah, we're locked down. And so I, then I roll in five mile road and 31 North and just kind of like two roads and no cars and still kind of a squally day here. And the other way, looking south on uh, at the bend there uh, by five mile road, um, no thing. 
then I'm still pedaling along on my way back into town and I'm going to get caught in a snow squall on the bike path. And sure enough, I'm in the middle of this. So I stop and it's like, okay, I'm choking on the snow. <laughs> but, uh, the next day that, you know, the sun comes out. And so I ride my bike on the Leelanau trail and I'm uh, uh, heading my way up towards Sutton's Bay just to get out in the, uh, and there was actually sunshine. I was like, my gosh. So this is from the trestle uh, uh, over 641. And just, I just kind of like, yeah, it's kind of a nice, but there's still no cars, you know? Um, and this is, I just kind of stopped. It was like, this is a person's front yard out there along the trail. And I just kind of thought like, yeah, it's a nice black and white, you know, high details scene. The cool thing about these cameras is, is that the resolution and the sharpness of these lenses is off the top of the charts. And so when you zoom into these things, there's detail beyond anything you're used to seeing anywhere because there's no Bayer filter on this camera. And so, and there's, and there's no AA filter, there's nothing. And so when you zoom in on these things, it's it's shocking to see the detail here. I mean, this is like medium format or four by five detail coming out of a 35 millimeter camera. I mean, we're not even coming close to showing you what this camera does here. You know, it's wild. Also along the Leelanau Trail, I mean, it was like happy clouds. You know, it's springtime a little bit here. The snow is gone, but there's sunshine. And it's like, man, this is this is starting to feel better. You know, I just, I just kind of caught this scene and I just like, you know, you know, I started to feel better, but I, as I rode back into town, here I am at, this is, this is at the intersection of 72 and 22, you know, M72 is off to the right. This is the parkway going into town. Nada, not one car. And I'm like, Oh my God, here we are. This is the 15th of April. So we're one month into the, the, pandemic at this point the correct 15th of march is when we got shut down i'm 14th or 15th correct so this is the 15th of april this is the parkway looking east same day not a car there's the snow squalls out over the bay and this is the cool thing about black and white you don't need to have a color camera to make interesting tones when you see these squalls you know that we're going across and it was like you know, you can tell it's a lake effect squall and you can see exactly what it's doing and you can see the whole thing, you know, and that's just, was like pretty. Um, then I worked my way down to Frankfurt uh, to ride on the Betsy Valley Trail and to ride along on that thing down there. Uh, as I started out, one of the first things I did is you go through under this bridge in, uh, in Beulah and uh, right there, I mean, this is road salt that's building up, that's dripping down through the bridge. And so we're destroying our infrastructure by pouring all this road salt on concrete, which just, you know, destroys everything. Uh, but along the Betsy Valley Trail, you come to M115. And so this is looking east, uh, or sort of east-ish on M115. Normally a pretty busy road. Obviously, middle of the day, look where the sky and the clouds are. Not a car that way. Turn around, look the other way not a car coming the other way, you know? And again, this is where playing with the light in tonality, you can see if you do work it right, that road becomes silver, okay? And so it's, it, you can make the, you can make stuff work right. This was, the other challenge we had at that time was really high water, if you recall. And so this is a kid's swing set down in Frankfurt and it's completely submerged. <laughs> I just thought like, oh man, this was more part of our luck for 2020. So uh, then I had somebody tell me, boy, you ought to go by the casino because there's nobody at the casino. So I pedaled out to the casino. I ride my bike all over. Okay. And so I go out. This is so this is, you know, on M72, Acme, Williamsburg area. And wherever I looked, it was just, you know, this parking lot as you drive by, you know, normally is fairly populated with cars and it was nothing, you know, it was crickets all over again. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh. So, you know, just afternoon light, just kind of playing with things. You can see where the shadows are going. And, you know, again, with that orange filter, you can get some tonality in the sky. I don't, I'm not dodging and burning here to make that sky come out. That's, that's what you do when you, when you, when you filter it that way. Um, so then I go another day back down. This is now the 21st of April and um, I'm on 8th Street looking east. 
Um, and I also then pedaled out toward Best Buy and the mall and areas like that. And uh, this is from the Best Buy parking lot and looking back over toward the mall and the US 31 and the Chevrolet dealership and everything. And see now the gas is down to 154 and still going down. But I go over to the mall and you know there's no cars at the shopping center. Anywhere you look, I back up as far as I can to, you know, to see if you can find a car. Um, and so this is South Airport Road, uh, looking east. <laughs> what I like about this is, um, this is looking east on the westbound lane of, um, this is on the north side of South Airport Road, looking east <laughs> on the westbound side, <laughs> east, west, north, south. Uh, and, you know, there's just no traffic there. And so then this would... <laughs> was my other one that was kind of like, dang, because I know this is the busiest intersection in Northern Michigan. This is 31 South and Silver Lake Road. And you normally see traffic, 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 traffic at that corner right there. So I'm standing on the lawn there by Best Buy, looking east, and there's not a car to be seen. And this is obviously in the middle of the afternoon, early, you know, late afternoon. So then I go over onto the bike path on 31. This is looking kind of northwest, but looking north on 31 south. Not a car that way. Turn around and look the other way. Not a car coming the other way. <laughs> you know? uh, and the other things I do when I'm riding around town is I just find something interesting in black and white that just catches my eye. And this was at the tennis courts at the high school. It was like, Oh, look, it's wet. And I like all these little things. And so that's what you can do with a 50 millimeter lens. Okay. There's, there's no tricks here. Um, pedal around by the dam you know, just to see what's going on. And I waited for that guy to show up there just so that I'd have some humanity somehow or other. Now we're at 28 April. Okay. And the stores are you know, papered up and closed you know, there's businesses that nobody's still open, you know, and so you know, I've just put the notes on the door to, to, to so the little detail. Alleys that are normally full, parking lots that are normally full are still empty. Here's Front Street and Division, looking at the CVS. This is the 28th of April, and here we are, still, you know, not a car in sight. Sidewalks are there, you know, empty. That one car is one of the cars that parks over at, um, Across the street for the Whiting Hotel, you know that they, they just are always there, um, and the police weren't even ticketing the cars. I mean, you could just park your car there and leave it overnight for weeks. It was just who was <laughs> nobody you weren't in anybody's way. It was just wild. So this is Front Street over by like the um, crossing the fire station, looking east. Uh, this is Front Street from Union Street, looking east down the the sidewalks here. This is looking south on Union. This is looking north on Wadsworth Street. I actually waited for that woman to get there so that I'd have something. And here's the thing, I'm just gonna you know, show you that um, if you don't have that person in the picture, if you just kind of cover up with your finger or whatever, just kind of imagine that, it changes that whole picture. But that tiny little speck of humanity changes the picture. So you wait for that stuff so that you, you throw that stuff in there. This is Sixth Street, if you're familiar with the bend in the road and Sixth Street and the bricks and just looking for the tonality there. Um, West Front Street, looking west again, you know, nothing. State Street, nothing. And then it got to the point where people were getting uh, kind of um, inventive. And so you fear of contact. Remember, you'd hear some people go out and get their newspaper and they'd bring it in the house and they would like it sit for two weeks so that they wouldn't get COVID from it because we didn't know. Okay. So here people were, weren't having the mail delivered. So they, if you unscrewed the jar, you could put your mail and they had it in a pail of sand so it wouldn't blow over or get kicked over. Um, Munson parking lot is still there. But while I was sitting there doing this shot, this car in the foreground here, there's a man sitting in it with the window down and he just throws all of his food trash right out on the parking lot there. So I, so it was like, okay, I got you on that one. So he was just literally sitting there with the window down and he threw out his Wendy's or McDonald's or whatever it was, just threw the trash out onto the ground. So got him on that one. But again, just, 
here we are at Munson. Normally this lot, you, you fight for a parking space and there's nobody there. The Opera House downtown, uh, you know, I'm sorry, we're all closed. <laughs> all the notes on that. Uh, then by this point, this is when people were getting inventive and doing takeaway dining for the first time. And so uh, here we are over at Slabtown Burgers and I waited for some people to show up so you can see a guy ordering there and somebody else picking up and taking away on the other side. But you couldn't eat indoors, but this was when takeaway was first starting to happen at that point. There were all, you remember there were all those signs up all over town about the first responders. And I just kind of thought, oh, this one kind of encapsulated it kind of nicely. So I captured that. You know, and so now we get around to the first of May and I'm back on 8th Street here. And I got to admit at this point, I'd reach what I'm going to call the saturation point. It's like, what the heck else can I show? And I stopped, okay? It's like, uh, this is a story that I don't know when it's going to end and I don't know what the end is going to be. And so I got to admit by the 4th of May, by this picture here, it was like, I just didn't go out and make any more because I was depressed about the whole situation. And um, there were a lot of other images that I'd done, but this is when I kind of stopped doing this because saturation is like, what else am I going to show? What other point do I have to prove at this point? And so I thought, so you've just seen 175 pictures. Uh, of, of this town uh, and the environs around here and it's empty Traverse City. So um, kind of that's the end of it. There isn't really a good end because we don't, I mean, we're still in it, but what am I going to show at this point? Uh, but at this point, if there's any other questions, I'd love to take them. If there's any other technical questions, anything you want to know, I'm an open book. Jim, Fire away. Andy, I'll let you run this, okay? Jim, go ahead, sir. Unmute yourself and... Uh, John, I was just thinking that no, at no time in history, at least hopefully for the foreseeable future, will this ever be like this again? I mean, this is something that is just... To look at it, it's a, no cars, almost no people. Uh, it's just really strange. It, like I said, it's almost apocalyptic. Uh, it just, it's history in the, you know, you recorded history that this took place. Yeah, it's, you, it's you, you can't amazing. believe it until you see it is what yeah. it comes down to, you know, because we're so used to seeing everything with life happening. And this was when life was interrupted. And, and so and here we are, here we are a year later, give or take, and we're we're not seeing this level of, of despair anymore, but we're nowhere near back where we were a year and a month, a year and two months ago. This is really desolate though. I mean, right from the, at the start when everybody was, didn't know what was going on, afraid to go out. So, but you, you forget how, amazing. how, you forget yeah. how just a year ago, how empty Traverse city was Yeah, except for Myers and Walmart. I didn't go to Walmart. <laughs> I just had one other quick question. The camera you said is a Leica. It is it's designed specifically for black and white, or was it? Did you modify it? You bought it. No, no this, this is a camera. It's called a Leica Monochrome. Okay. And that's that's the way it's designed and built. Um, and it's a completely stealth camera. This one has. It, it, you have to look really hard to see where it says Monochrome up here on the on the top. But there's there's no markings on it. It's a completely stealth camera body. Um, you know, it's it's not mirrorless, but there's no you know there's no it's a rangefinder camera. Okay. You look at the side over here, but uh, you can look up. Go on, go to B and H and type in like a monochrome, and you'll see them pop right up. They're they're right there. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And I I use only only Leica lenses on there, so I have a a twenty eight, a thirty five, a fifty, and a seventy five right now, and I'm trying to get the ninety. But I don't use zoom lenses. I just take one lens, and that's you know what, what I've got is what I'm going to do. But you know you can do just about everything you need to do with either a 35 or a 50. And I would say start with a 50. You just have to walk forward or back up if you want to. Change everything you've seen here, there was no exotic. There's nothing exotic going on here. It's like a 50 or a 30. A few of those are those long 85s. You know the, the few of the those kind of fuzzy ones, those blurry ones. Um, but that was only a little bit here and there. But yeah, so there's there's no there's no tricks here. It's just 
it's just this camera, 50 millimeter lens, um, and it's a monochrome camera. And uh, if you really like making black and white, there's just nothing like having a monochrome camera and throwing a filter on the front. You know, remember, I grew up in the film days when we had to have all the filters for all the different stuff, both for color and for black and white, because I shot transparencies. And so you had to filter for the transparencies uh, the same way. So we had black and white filters for everything too. So you can have reds, you can put greens, you can put yellows, you can put all that stuff for black and white, but that's for accentuating different stuff. But if you want to just gain basic contrast and have a, lent, a filter you can keep on all the time, you just keep on a, a Rattan 40 or the, you know, what they used to call it, the Kodak Rattan, but it's just a orange filter. And see the detail, see that you get that detail in the sky. If you just shoot without a filter, that sky is going to be as white as that shell sign. Yeah. You know, because it, you're shooting the sky, you're shooting a light source. So the light's coming at you. It's not reflecting off from something. So anytime you shoot the sky, it's a light source. So that's why, you know, here, you know, I've got this, the, the sun behind me, but um, that's what the orange filter does. But uh, if, you, if you like making black and white images, you, 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 just, you get a monochrome camera. Anyone else have any questions for John? I do. Fire away. Um, John, this is Mary Picar. Um, Hi. I've enjoyed this. This has really been interesting. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to ask you as I'm listening through here, and this is not uh, technical questions. This is about the emotional part of it. Uh -huh. Did do you have a much uh, remembrance of this time, like how you felt when you were taking these? Do you Absolutely. Have Any picture I've ever made, I can tell you what it smelled like, what it looked like, what I felt like, what was going on on everything. I have total recall of every picture I've ever made. <laughs> That's incredible. And so, yes, my feelings in a lot of this, and I, it reflects in a lot of those images, it's very gray, it's very wet, it's very remorseful. There was, I mean, I, I was depressed. There's no two ways about it. I mean, we did not know what was going on and nobody wanted to get sick. At least I didn't want to get sick. So I stayed away from everybody. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I'm here alone in the house. I've got nobody to bounce anything off from. It's just me. So um it's, it wasn't much fun so this was my outlet was to go out and do this i couldn't go to work right right one of the other things i noticed during because i was out doing pictures but i'm in bel-air i don't I, I look at these pictures and i mean as much as it was different not having traffic by bel-air i can go early in any day and get a picture without much traffic in bel-air but i've never seen anything like this in Traverse. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. Well, it was um, incredible to me. Thank you. And that's why I was getting them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. No. I, so is there anything else I didn't mean to cut you off? No, you, you didn't cut me off. It just, I'm just blown away at, you know, seeing this much of Traverse City with, I mean, all of your pictures combined, I don't think have enough people or cars to be what you would see in a typical shot. If you combined all the people in cars into one of these. I agree. Yeah, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, no, that's, that's, why it was stunning. That's, that's why, and again, I was just out on my bike, just pedaling around. And when I'd see something, okay, I'd stop and get the picture. John, you, you, shortly after this picture was taken, you kind of disappeared off the radar for a little while. You were posting a picture every day for a while on, on social media of, of your, your tour around town and, it was it was a great documentary of, of what you were seeing for those of us who were kind of on the outskirts of town. Did you just stop posting or did you be, just couldn't handle it, couldn't venture out anymore? I just, uh, yeah, it got to the point where I didn't, the, the, yeah, I, I kind of hit a real, I was in a funk. There was no two ways about it. I mean, there was just, um, the, there wasn't any other story to tell. I, I couldn't entertain myself with much. I mean, there's there's pictures that I was just making for myself around the house or around the yard or something. But it was like, nah, I, I just, you're right. I mean, I just, um, you know, isolation does it weird things to you. I mean, getting sent off to Siberia, you know, yeah. I know why they drive people mad. Um, it's, it's just kind of like that. So I just... I was not in a good mood. It really was. It was tough. It really was hard. 
So I'm, I'm glad to see you back out posting pictures again of, of what you're seeing as you, you venture around. And I know there, there's talk around, uh, I, I hear people talk about the images that you share and it really does touch a lot of people and, and your, your whole package here that you put together for us tonight did an amazing job of showing how, how, how you can capture feeling and emotion and, and document what's going on. So John, I really truly appreciate you coming out and sharing this with us tonight. I, I really appreciate your, your, I, sorry, I'm drawing a blank on the word, but you opened up and you showed you what you felt like during this time. And, and that takes a lot. And I, I really, it means a lot that you, you were willing to be as open and transparent and, and vulnerable. That's the word I'm looking for vulnerable with us as, as you were. Well, thanks. I, I, again, I said, this is a visual diary and this is, you know, instead of putting it into words, I put it into pictures. And, and to show just kind of what the world was like around me. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's a capsule of history. Uh, photography records. And so that's what our machines are. They, we, you know, you see these things and you get, a, you get all, you know, rolled into it. This is a light recorder. It's all it is, okay? It's not a video recorder. It's just a light recorder. It isn't a sound recorder. So it's what you choose to capture with the light that's all this machine does and so you can tell stories with it and that's um a really you, know, you you can do different things i i with commercially i use my cameras and i illustrate products and illustrate people and do all sorts of stuff and i do it under control of the studio and that's my commercial job this is my personal stuff this is you know the diff the other side of it and just you know when we couldn't go to work no one was going to come to the studio. I will want to add one other little thing. Just if you, if you're in the still in the darkness of winter here and you want to learn a little bit about something, there was a book that uh, was written in 1973 that is still as valuable today as ever, and it was written by Susan Sontag, and it's simply called On Photography. And you can go through this whole book, and there's not one photograph in the entire book. This is, she's one of the smartest people you will ever read. And again, it's just called On Photography. And if you want to get totally inspired and your brain twisted around a little bit about why you're making pictures and why we do what we do, I highly recommend that book. Um, I, I ordered it down at Horizon Books, but you can get it different places. You can go on Google Books and read excerpts from it and just for free. And you'll see that it's like, wow, she's, challenges you, you know, as to why you're making these pictures uh, and what we do and our responses to it and the power we have and the responsibility we have with these cameras as to what we, what we choose to record. And just today, just to show you the power of imaging and the power you have today, I don't know if anybody caught it, but the uh, NASA sent a new lander rover to, to Mars, right? And what did they wait for? That first picture. That validated everything, okay? People validate everything through a photograph. So that's the power you have. So just, you know, and for whatever you wanna do with it, but people believe a picture. They believe it with their own eyes. And every picture tells a thousand, you know, is a thousand words. Yeah, and every picture is a story, absolutely. So I believe that because you can say so much. In fact, I had a man, that wrote a book. Do I have it here? This man is a poet. And it's, he says, it, the book is called A Language the Image Speaks. And the man writes poetry to his response to art. And uh, he's a, he's a well-known poet and he wrote, but he saw a photograph of mine and he, it moved him so much. It was the opening picture <laughs> in this whole book. And it's a shot that I took up on Mackinac Island at the Grand Hotel. And he wrote an entire poem from seeing a photograph. And it was a, it, he saw it originally because his mother-in-law had a print of it on her wall. And he wrote to me and he says, did you make that picture? I said, yeah. And, and so he wrote a poem about that. And so the people are moved in all kinds of different ways by the images 
that you think you're innocently putting out there. So there's power in it. So, you know, take that and be inspired by that, that other people are moved by it. And that's why I find it interesting. I, I, the only thing I throw up on Facebook are my images. I never put anything up out there. I never repost anything. Don't do anything like that. If it's not my original content, I don't put it there. But people react to that. And all I do is throw up pictures. And it's amazing the things that people write back to me or will say by what they see in this image. And many times it's they, see, they read into things, I don't know. And sometimes it's like, I need to get a print of that because that was the, that sunset happened while my mother died. Stuff like that. I get this all the time. It's like, oh my, you know? So it's wild what happens. So just the simple power of just throwing up an image you know, and consistently doing it, you'd be surprised what happens. And the feedback is wonderful because people are genuine and they'll say what they think. And it, it drives you to be a better, make better images. And it'll catch you off guard. Sometimes you'll think like, oh, I think this one's not so hot and then go crazy over it. So, yeah. so but it's fun, but do that. I mean, and just, uh, and just put yourself out there. Don't make these pictures for yourself and just leave them on a hard drive or make prints and put them into a closet. That's not why we make pictures. Okay, we, we capture photons, that's our job, okay? And so print them out, display them, do something so that the world sees what you're doing. It would be like being a wood, woodworker and building all this stuff and just keeping it in your basement no one ever sees it. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, you, we, the photography is a storytelling medium. And so if you've got a story to tell and you've captured it, why keep it bottled up and it never gets published? So, Agreed. That's, so that, that's, that's what, put yourself out there. I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic hobby. It's a great pastime. You can never get good enough at it. Uh, you can keep working at it until the day you drop. And you, you know, you'll just always learn more and more and more. You always do. At least I always do. Uh, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't learn something more. And I apply it one way or the other. And, and, and the, the basics are simplify. And I keep preaching that. You know, bottom ISO, pick an aperture, leave it there, just chase it with a shutter speed. Use a basic lens. You don't have to have fancy zooms. It's a lot easier to carry it around and focus it. That, you know, <laughs> it's really it's that simple. Right. You, you, you're making it harder than it is. We normally do. That's our nature. <laughs> right. Well, John, thank you very much. Jerry, You're welcome. Anything, anything you need to add to the meeting or anything before we get ready to close her down? No, I just want to thank uh, John for a uh, tremendous uh, adventure and uh, travel through time. Uh, we, I think we all could relate to the loneliness and destitute that uh, we've had here during this particular time and look at ways that we can survive. And I think we realize very, very much so that we need other people. We can't be by ourselves. Right. And uh, this uh, pandemic has uh, brought, brought out a lot of truths. And John has done an excellent job here in his photos. We appreciate that. We're glad you're local. And Thank you. Uh, we enjoy what you do and just ask you to continue doing it. Thank keep you. Keep up the good work. I Thanks, everybody, for much. watching. And I want to close this out, John, by saying thank you. And anyone who is watching this, you, you, you had to have picked up a couple of extra tips on something you may not have thought or known. And I hope that you take some of this stuff and apply it. And uh, I look forward to seeing your images shared on our Facebook page so we can see what, what you guys are out there capturing. John Robert Williams, I cannot thank you enough. I really, truly appreciate the friendship we've developed. And more importantly, the, the, the mentorship that you've offered, whether you've known it or not. Um, you've been a huge influence on myself and this really means a lot to me that you were willing to put this presentation on. So thank oh, you. I, I, I well, thank you for asking me for me. And, and if you ever want anything else, I'm an open book. So <laughs> I've thank gotten millions of pictures. Thank you, John. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Stay warm. And John, I hope you'll visit us next month and see the presentation we got going on. I think you'll really like, um, uh, Joe Edelman, I think you'll you'll find his style very um, very interesting. Great, thanks. Oh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I try to catch up with these as many as I can. Thanks much. Yeah, thank you, thank you, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting out. Unless Jerry, you got anything else? Nope, we're good. 
All right. Good night, everybody. A lot of great things happening. Everybody stay safe. Thank you.